Hey guys, what's up? My name is Ashley and I'm a six-figure reseller on Poshmark and eBay and today I'm going over all my thoughts about whatnot. I just had two shows, two live auctions on there this past week so now I'm going to go over my essentially my experience and my thoughts and any tips or anything like that. I am at my house today, so I guess my apartment. Um, I was gonna go to my office to film this, but Jenna LA Posterton has a show in 20 minutes I wanna see, and it's like 20 minutes till then. Well, I just said that. in 20 minutes she has a show, and I'm gonna try to film this in 20 minutes so that I can watch her show after this. So if you can't tell, I've been on the app a ton um, in the past week. It is so, so addicting. Um, not just to be on it and like watch all your friends and stuff like that and even just go and visit new people and just honestly people have really great stuff and you can get really good deals so that is why I feel like I'm on it all the time so in order to save time I just decided to like pop on really quickly right here um, because I also don't have too much going on in my office today and it's a three-day weekend so I was like I'm just gonna sit down here on the floor and uh, pop this video out so I kind of also wanted it to be just like my raw thoughts on everything at all i didn't really plan anything for this video i think i have like a little bit of structure i'll talk about like my experience tips things like that things i've noticed what i'm going to kind of structure and do moving forward with the app so if you are thinking about selling on it or thinking of ways to essentially better your sales um, on the app which i know a lot of people are looking to get into it then this is a great video um, for you to get started but i do apologize if it is all over the place because i'm kind of just going to go and ramble essentially my thoughts are just like all over the place um and hopefully Stella over here yeah you hopefully she's a good girl so I might have to pause the video because she can go crazy living in the city here but starting off I guess about my experience so I had two shows I had a first show on Monday at 8 p.m central standard time and then my second show I had on Thursday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. So I kind of right now am testing out a lot about what I want to do to move forward. I definitely want to have more structure moving forward and have set times. I really do think that will help, but currently I'm seeing what's going to work best for me and what's going to work best for other people. And additionally, I found what's really important is if you can not overlap with someone else's show, just because of course people are going to always like toggle between both or they're gonna have somebody who they like better. So especially starting off as people try to feel you out, it's good just so that you can have their full attention and they may not have to like think about popping into another show if perhaps you're not being as engaging or just, oh, there she goes. Are you gonna be good? Be good. She just, she's like, I don't know. Okay, she's good for now. No, 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 she's not. Hey, you wanna come stand by me? You wanna come over here? Just chill? You just wanna chill. She just wants to chill. <laughs> okay. Um, so you don't wanna overlap shows or anything like that. So I'm I'm really trying to do my best. I'm actually trying to figure out when everyone's show is gonna be. Um, just so that I can make sure where I can insert my show in, where it's not gonna overlap with everyone else's show. So I'm trying to figure that out, map that out to see what's gonna be best for me. Cause at the end of the day, of course I wanna do what best for me. I also wanna have a show that a lot of people can come to and of course I can have um, better sales with. So that is important to me and something you should definitely think about if you're looking into having a show, okay, <laughs> um, to not overlap it with somebody else's. Okay, can you just leave for a sec? Your tail is gonna literally block the camera. I know you've got a floofy tail. <laughs> She's so happy right now. Can you sit? Sit. I'm sorry, one sec. Sit or move. You sit, yeah. You sit down, good girl. Okay. Um, and anyway, so that's really important with terms of show timing, but definitely I think it's good to figure out the time of the show that is best for you, but still be considerate of maybe what works for other people. So my first show, I definitely marketed a ton on Instagram. I actually planned it I think like a week and a half in advance because I wanted to give tons of time to market it and really have a big hype for my first show to kind of get the ball rolling so that's why I booked my show and marketed it a week and a half in advance and that totally helped I marketed a bunch on social media I think I had like 400 saves on it which I know is a ton but I'm going to get into a lot of that later in my thoughts on all of that so booking in advance is definitely going to be more important than booking like really soon like the day before or anything like that so you can give people time especially if you're new to learn about you and your show and get ready for it essentially so but I will say for my first show 
I think I did have it at the same time as somebody else's. And so I started off really strong, but definitely lost a lot of people along the way. So that's something that I did notice. And that's why I'm trying really hard to figure out a good time that doesn't overlap with a lot of other people. Also at 8 p.m. that time, it I'm just not a, like a night owl per se. I do have a full-time job and do have things I have to do the next morning. So that show ran till 10 p.m. And it was just really long. I was so tired afterward. And I ran about 50 items. I had a lot of giveaways. So I was kind of just learning also how to run it. So it could have been quicker. That is one thing I'm looking forward to is being a little bit more efficient with my shows. One thing I want to do moving forward is probably have about an hour long show. So I'm first trying to figure out how many items I can do in an hour, probably around 40 to 50 as I continue to learn to be efficient. However, I think how I'm going to market my shows moving forward is that probably in like a week or two or so until I get a couple things down is that they're going to be set times versus set items. So instead of saying I'm running 50 items, so here's a show, it's going to be, you know, I have about 50 items. However, the show is only gonna be an hour long, no matter how many items I get through, just so that people can have a set expectation of how long the show is gonna be. Because sometimes you'll get on a show and there's tons of items, you don't know how long someone's gonna take, and you really don't know how long and how much time you can invest in it, especially if there's a lot of other people going on. So I'm hoping with having a set time for the show, people can have that expectation and people might be like, okay, an hour, I can totally do that. I'm gonna set this time an hour away um, of my day to watch Ashley's show and then I can do whatever else I have going on for the day or go to somebody else's show. But the six o'clock time, going backwards, was I really liked at least for my schedule just because I was able to kind of be done with work and everything, get myself together, have the show, finish it. I think that one only had about 45 items and it finished about an hour and a half and then I was able, and so let me back up. And then, so six o'clock, I was done by 7.30ish, 7.40ish. And then I was able to package up sales and get that all done. And so that the next day I just had to shift them out. And then I could just get started on my next show. That show was like wipe clean. It's really nice just to be able to complete one show really quickly and all the shipping and then move on to the next. So I do like having the earlier shows for that reason. So I think the seven, six to seven o'clock time would be good for me. But again, I know a lot of people like that time as well. So figuring out when other people have their shows with day of the week and see how I can fit in um, is gonna be what I wanna do moving forward. And two shows was really good. I think I wanna do kind of two and a half shows moving forward. That would be my goal to have two one hour shows a week with about 40, 50 items and then have like a half show, maybe like in the middle of the week or the weekend, or I do about like 20 items and then have kind of like a chat afterward because I know a lot of people have been doing those and those have been so fun and so informative and especially in the beginning phases of this app, it's been really fun to continue to connect with the community more on a deeper level. And when you're selling things, it can be really, really hard to keep engaging with the chat. It can be moving so fast and you're trying to like sell your item and stuff. So it's really hard, but when you're just doing like a, essentially just in your regular Q and A chat or whatever it is discussion, then it's a lot easier to focus in on the chat and be able to talk to people that way. <laughs> you silly. Yeah, you are. She loves doing that. Um, just don't mind. Can you stop? Can you stop for a sec? Just a sec. So that's about my shows. Uh, I sold out on my first show and I had two items that didn't sell my second show. So going into like the types of items I'm selling and the prices of them, I have been selling a lot of the same stuff that I sell like in my Poshmark closet, uh, more name brand type stuff. I do have a, another sale coming up on September 10th that is going to be more mall brands, mostly because a lot of it's coming from my closet um, and stuff that I was either going to take to the buy sale trade store or post online. Um, cute stuff like Zara, Free People. Uh, why do you want to play with your toys so much right now? Um, stuff like that. So I'm starting up at $5 bids, which a lot of my bids right now have been higher than that um, because I pay a lot for my items or just a lot more than the average person. Um, and I'll get into that about starting bids in a second, but I have that show going on. So I'm also going to test out to see how starting lower bids goes, how those kind of trendier items do. 
and it'll just be a totally different show. So I'm excited to see how that goes. But a lot of my shoes right now have been more revolved designer brands. I'll like insert a little bit more trendier mall brands if they're like more on the super trendy side that I would sell on Poshmark for. So I have insert those in and those tend to do well. And I've definitely learned that, you know, style is huge. And also what's huge is having a lot of different sizes for your show. And I've also noticed that like smaller sizes, well, a lot of people are definitely smaller sizes and it's good to have those sizes for your show. It's good to have a good mix of sizes. And I've learned that I have a ton of like smaller sizes, extra smalls um, that I'm selling and I'm really, really trying to focus on those larger sizes as well. A lot of my items I pay more than $10 for and the starting bids I've started my out currently have usually been, I will calculate, I was, I've created a spreadsheet for whatnot and I will put in all my items I'm having, the cost of goods, kind of, uh, I try to test out starting bids to see what I would need to start at so I don't lose money because I lost money on four items in my first show and I knew that I think with the starting bids, but I kind of wanted to start lower and thinking that, you know, it'd been up just like a couple of hours in order to make my money back. But you can't really just expect that to happen. You kind of have to go in thinking, okay, if like one person bids on this item, would I be happy at the price it sells at? So that's a really good thing to think moving forward, especially if you are starting off and you don't know like how many people are gonna be in your show or things gonna sell. You could have some things sell really well and some things just not sell as you expect. So I have made a spreadsheet and I will put in kind of what the um, starting bid needs to be and I've calculated the fees in there where after it's about 11% for fees, they have 8% that whatnot takes and about 3% and like 30 cents for PayPal. So I estimate all that in and then whatever after fees and then I will calculate the profit based off after cost of goods and then I will just kind of play with the starting bid to see what profit I would make if I start off there and most of the time it's a starting bid of like I'll make a dollar or um, you know my money back essentially at that starting price and I try to even keeping consistent I've been playing around with it um, but since I lost money on four of the items I went ahead and I've just decided to have starting bids that would not make me lose money because obviously you don't want to lose money, especially you are doing work for the item and you're still packaging the item. So you don't wanna lose money for doing all the work on that. And I'm not gonna say which items I lost money for, but definitely they were items still at the end of the day. It, the items sold for a good amount. I just paid way too much for the, the item. So it's still important to make sure I think for whatnot. Lower cost of goods is definitely a better way to go, even if it's like a more designer item, because you also just never know like how it's going to go. Um, there's always give and take. It's still a learning process. Everyone's still learning on there. And you can definitely pay more for designer brands. And if you have like a high-end designer brand and like start it at like $50 and it's like a $1,000 items, that's fine. But if it's like a revolved brand that like does one well Poshmark maybe sells for like $50, but you paid like $15 for it, then you know, you may not make that much for profit back on that. So you really have to gauge what, um, kind of, I'm still learning like what the um, price of items I wanna pay to go in. But I honestly, right now I'm trying for new items I source moving forward to have them under $10. I'm trying not to pay more than $10 for the items I'm picking up. Um, but it is hard, you know, but I have, that means I'm trying to go out sourcing more, doing a little bit more thrifting and stuff like that, because in order to keep my cost of goods low, that's kind of how you have to do it. So, cause I've learned with the items that I do have, that I have paid between 10, $20 for, I just am not making the profit. That's really totally worth it because at the same time, you know, if I'm paying $10 and items I'm making profit off of it, like 10, $15 from that, I'd rather go to the bins, pay, you know, 50 cents for an item and sell that item for like 10, $15, make $10 off of it, you know? So if you're either going to be, you know, going to the bins or really, you know, really focusing on really high design items that are not costing as much. So there really is a balance there, but currently in my mind, I'm, currently reverting back to thrifting so it's a little bit different than what my Poshmark closet is so I've kind of been separating out Poshmark items and whatnot items and they're two totally different types of items as I'm continuing to learn what sells well on there. I will say I have had some good designer items that I made a really really good profit on in my first show however those just happen to be items I got so cheap for being really really great designer brands even items that people could have purchased from me and flip on their own but that doesn't happen that's not as consistent to come across and with whatnot you really have to find a lot of items you consistently can come across to sell and that's just not as 
reliable as a way of sourcing. So that is why I just am moving away from that. And I'm putting those items in my Poshmark closet. And then with Poshmark, I am listing about like six items a day still on there. I'm trying to stay active with it. So I'm really focusing on reaching a $100 profit per item versus before it's a little bit lenient. You know, I make I'd aim for like a $50 profit, sometimes like 30, 40 for a fast flip. But now I'm really trying to like focus on a $100 profit. And if it doesn't sell for like $100, it's like, oh, well, I need 50, which is still really good. So that's currently what I'm focusing on in my closet right now. So yeah, this is where I'm kind of like losing my train of thought and trying to get back to the whatnot tips and my experience with the show. Let's talk about shipping with it. I was so confused with shipping. I was so scared. I was like, I have no idea how to ship. I was like, oh my gosh. And they don't really tell you that much like about how to ship. I kind of just end up going one by one and it took a really long time. I think it took me three hours to ship for my first show. And I sold, I think I had sold 50 items about like 37 packages. So bundling was like awesome. That's why my second show, I definitely try to encourage bundling because the less packages you have to put together, it's just so much easier for that. So I'm really gonna try to do that moving forward. But shipping, definitely make sure that you have a lot of poly mailers on hand. I think that was just the easiest thing to do was use the poly mailers. Love having extra like brown boxes from your usual packages from before. That was super helpful. So just make sure you have those supplies beforehand. I end up like overnighting poly mailers because I was really scared of not having enough. So that is huge. Definitely make sure you have more tape. Was running through tape really quickly for a lot of those big packages. And yeah, just still, I think it's really important still, even though you're selling on whatnot, really try to like have a decent presentation. I still put things in my reusable bags and ship things out that way. And I have ordered a couple more like little like thank you card stickers. Um, I usually don't do that for like Poshmark. I don't know, whatnot. I feel like you, it is really important to have that like high rating and make sure people like to come back to you because it is a lot of the same buyers. So I think that's a lot more important to make sure you're continuing that presentation because on Poshmark, it's like you may have a one-off buyer or something, but on whatnot, because it is a smaller community, you are having a lot more of the same buyers and buyers are just purchasing a lot from you know the same people or whatnot so definitely continue to hone in on community and presentation for shipping but you know it is fairly simple and the payouts for whatnot they do i think i'm just finally starting to get payouts for the shipments i have but i'm really looking forward to the day where i get to i think i think it's like 1000 sales that's probably like the best way to think of it and then you can get like your payout as soon as you click the button and ship the item so i'm really looking forward to that that's definitely like an incentive to have more shows um going into kind of like prizes of my experience with that i definitely think that helped a lot it really helped me promote it on social media to have those different like giveaways and stuff like that and fun bags i had like giveaways of what did i do I forget what I had the giveaways for the first show. Oh yeah, just little like skincare giveaways that I got. And then for prices, if you spend over $75, I was giving away a $5 Starbucks and Target gift card. And then the highest spender got this like really adorable little like handmade bag. And then my second show, what I did was I had for everyone that bought two or more items, I put them in a raffle for a long champ bag, which I really liked that. That was, I really liked incentivizing people not more to spend more because people were always like, spend the amount of money they feel comfortable with, but encouraging people to buy one or more items um, to get that bag. I really like that. So I might do that moving forward, but I'm definitely testing out prizes in that way. So if you see me doing different kind of prizes for different things, I'm really testing out to see what I personally like um, and what everyone else likes as well. So yeah, that was good, but I'm still gonna test it out. And for giveaways, I think I did three giveaways the first show, but like two giveaways was good for the second show, one in the beginning and one in the middle. If you're thinking about giveaways, definitely don't like pay too much for a giveaway um, because a lot of people just like, like to get free stuff anyway. So as long as you have like a decent item, I mean, I, I don't get me wrong, I love the Starbucks and the whatever $5 gift card giveaways, but don't feel like you need to do that. Like people will still like a giveaway for anything else that you have. So that is something about giveaways. Um, do know that you do pay for shipping on the giveaway. So if it's about like an ounce, like you will pay $3 for that shipping. So my first show, I had three giveaways and I was negative $12 balance starting off because three giveaways and then it was about like $4 for shipping for the giveaway. So do factor in for your giveaway that cost of shipping. Um, so that's why it's also important not to be like spending too much money on your giveaway because you do also have to pay for shipping. And also know, because I did not know this for the buy now section, if you're ever doing like a buy coffee for me type thing or whatever you have, you have to like technically still ship something out to them. So a lot of people will ship stickers or something. That's probably the easiest thing to do, but you do have to ship something out. So if you're doing one of those, um, just 
in terms of, because I didn't really think about this, I did not know this, you have to factor in the time for shipping those things and just like adds extra time, um, just extra little bit of hassle. It's definitely worth it because if people are, you know, giving you $5 for shout or something, super nice of them, um, but does add extra time. So just something to consider um, when doing those. It's not just like free money that, you know, send off. Um, but the reason why it gets people free shipping is because technically they're paying for shipping. So that's another huge thing because as a buyer, if you're buying that, I feel like sometimes you don't realize that. They're like, oh yeah, pay $5 for their Starbucks, but you're also paying like $3 for shipping. And that's why you get discounted shipping. So I feel like it's only really good to do that if you are trying to get discounted shipping. So something to remember if you're a buyer on whatnot, which I'm just gonna say that at the end about, you can use my code for, for whatnot because definitely um, you can sign up if you have not signed up for whatnot. Okay. If you have not signed up for whatnot, um, I have a code which gives you ten dollars. I think I believe it gives you ten dollars. It gives me ten dollars too, kind of like a mutual um, benefit there if you sign up with my link, which I'll put in the description below. And also, if of course, if you're through this video, you probably know what whatnot is. But for some reason, if you don't know what whatnot is, is a live auction platform for selling stuff. You can sell clothes, but they also sell like vintage stuff, Pokemon cards, a lot of different things, and they're only growing. They only started like the women's category three months ago, and it's blown up so much. So super cool in that way. A lot of people getting on now are like very early adopters, so that's why it's really cool to start selling, and don't hesitate just to start selling if you are thinking about it, because everyone's kind of learning along the way, and you will get a hang of it once you continue on with it. So I feel like I've shared my experience. Uh, the one last thing, I guess I'll talk about how much I made from them. And so I will say, and this goes with the whole part of the video, is I know and totally understand that my situation of having like a YouTube following and having an Instagram following me, like I promoted a lot on there, totally, 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 totally help my situation. Do not compare my sales and what I did from it, what your experience may be. So please, 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 please remember that. You can definitely grow on whatnot without having Instagram following. Tons of people have done it already, but just know that my experience is that. So it's a little bit harder for me to know what works or what really is the best way moving forward if you don't have as big of a following on Instagram, but definitely all the tips that I'll mention in the later part of this video, I will try to factor that in because I know my tips of what like I did may not help you because my experience may be totally different. But in terms of going into how much I made, so for the first show after fees and giveaway stuff, I made $850. And then for the second show, I made $750. And I had about the same amount of items. Um, so I think in the first show, I just I had a couple more items that made a lot more money. Um, but I had a lot of items that I lost more money on. It. So the items I made a lot more money on definitely just outset it. And then I had more consistency in my second show, but I made less money. So at the end of the day, you really just have to look at the kind of overall number that will help you moving forward because I have heard I have heard it from everyone, even sellers who have tons of followers and have been having tons of shows that no matter how much you're selling, I'm learning, like you will always have those items that you're like, wow, I thought I would have made more money on. Or, you know, like, wow, I made more money than I thought of for that item. So don't get discouraged about items that don't make a lot of money because I hear it from everyone, no matter how long they've even been on there, they still have shows where they're like, wow, like that didn't sell for as much as I thought. And going into it, I thought I would want to be like, oh, I want to make at least like $20 an item. But I feel like it's really hard to say that. So instead, I'm just going to have like a set amount I want to make per show because, you know, it, it really kind of is not always consistent. And you can't just like look at one item and be like, wow, that one item did not hit the goal I wanted to make for it because you will have another item that outset that. So that is so important. I feel like what I'm realizing right now for whatnot is don't just look at the individual individual item. Look at maybe the average of the total and a certain goal for the sales that you want to have from it or else you'll get like really discouraged. So that is a huge tip if you are starting off and whatnot. The last thing I will say because it was my experience and I definitely felt really bad about it. I definitely had for the first show, I noticed flaws that I didn't see once I was shipping things out. Before the show, I literally went through things twice and I'm human, so it just happens. I reached out to them telling them I would totally cancel the order, which I went ahead, reached out to whatnot. They went ahead, they were really responsive and they canceled it for me. And the second show I had 
two items that end up having flaws. Well, I noticed when I was running the show, even after checking the items, actually someone reached out and told me, they're like, I think there's a stain on that. I had no idea how I didn't notice a stain. It was like smack on the back of these pants and I did not even notice at all. So, th so thank you. Thank you if that was you who said that, because I don't know how I didn't miss that and how everyone else missed it. Um, but I was, that was really great noticing it, at least in the show, because I was able to tell them, hey, go ahead, cancel the order. Um, and even for one pair of the pants, I was able just to go ahead and wash it myself and they ended up perfect, but I still um, gave a little bit extra in that bundle just due to like the inconvenience of that, because I felt so bad. You know, it's really, it's almost like embarrassing running a show and not noticing these flaws but that's why it's also good to bring it close to the camera let people see everything about the item so they can really see the print pattern and condition of the item so i do think that's super important and although it can be embarrassing and kind of like oh i don't want people to notice these flaws on it it's obviously better for people to know things and see that then and be able to like reconcile things in the moment than just ship things out that have flaws so that's super important i know everyone is human so don't be scared of like oh my gosh what if i ship something that has a flaw um i think it's be important to be transparent like during the live to let people know like hey you know we check these items if you do get anything that has not up to your standard as was stated in the show feel free to reach out to me reach out to whatnot and uh we will get it resolved i think a lot of times if it's already sent out then you do have to have the buyer reach out to whatnot it's a little bit complicated but if you haven't shipped it out then it's a little bit easier for them just to go ahead and cancel the order on their own or you reach out to whatnot so there's different ways about it but don't feel bad just do make sure you check your items a lot. And I also have heard people about getting like flawed items and stuff, which I understand can be super frustrating if it happens a lot, but do understand like everyone is human. And like, I was even shocked that I literally checked these items twice and they still had flaws on them. But, um, so if you're a buyer, just be, uh, you know, give people a little bit of grace. And if you're a seller, just make sure you do as much due diligence as you can to make sure that there are not flaws on items. Um, so yeah, that's my experience for the show. Really excited to be moving forward with it. I think it's a great way to continue to increase your cash flow with items. If you are paying up for items and want to supplement this in a way to help with cash flow, as you want to turn over items quicker, as you're still learning about, you know, more higher ASP on the platforms, I think this is an excellent, excellent way to do that. So I'm going to go into some tips and I'm going to focus this around more of like what I would do or what I've kind of noticed if I didn't have as big of an Instagram following because... I know that's going to help more people and I know that my case of having the following being able to market to a lot of different people and have people notice my show is totally different than somebody who doesn't have as much of following if that's you, if that's someone you know trying to start off with the show. So here are some tips that I've realized helps me but maybe can translate over to if you don't have as much of a following. And a lot of it's going to translate into kind of promoting yourself on whatnot because I've noticed a lot of people and even growing on whatnot, even if they're not promoting a lot on social media, they're like, always engaging in shows, having more shows, and I think that's a big way of growing your following and whatnot. So some tips, if you're one looking to grow your following, I would say make sure you pop into a lot of different shows and even like the smaller shows and just make sure you're engaging with the community. People do notice if you are engaging in different shows, if they pop into the show and they see you again. I mean, everyone's super welcoming. Like I'll go in and I try to follow whoever looks like they're having shows or anything like that, the moderators. So um, just get out of people's shows, you know, see if you can moderate for some people that tends to give a little extra perk and people will follow the moderators a little bit more sometimes. Just make sure if you're a moderator that you are, you know, helping out if you can, because sometimes people run shows and there's like a lot of different questions or they have to keep track of stuff. And it's just so helpful when you do that. Okay, my phone almost started down. So that is the biggest, biggest number one tip if you're trying to grow on whatnot is really being involved in the community. So the biggest thing is having those like interactions and i would say the second biggest thing is make sure you have a show booked people are more likely to follow people if they go to your channel and they can see you've had shows you have a current show unfortunately it doesn't show if you've ever had past shows so even if you are a seller and don't have a past show if you've had past shows but don't have a current one coming up people may not think you've even sold before even though it sells how many items you've sold like people don't know if you're gonna have another show in a month or what so they might be like i don't really care about following you if you don't have a show because at the end of the day there's not okay don't take this for granted, but it's not as much 
um, incentive to follow somebody if they don't have a show going on because you know you can still interact with them but if they're not having a show then they may not be as enticed to follow them so my advice to you is, is bookmark a show if you know you're gonna have a show put it on the schedule as soon as possible so people can see you're having a show they're way more likely to follow you if you're engaging with the chat and they see that you have a show so going into that Bookmark the show as soon as you can. Try to make it in a time that's not around a lot of other people's. Still a time that works for you. And I, I did that. I do this, and I don't feel like I see a ton of people doing it. People definitely do it. I think it's so important to if you have, um, you know, certain brands in your show, definitely put the brands of your show on the little like poster area of your show. That way, people don't have to like click into it, especially if you don't have the show loaded. No one really goes into the show and see what the store is loaded with unless you say like I've loaded items into my store, which most people don't do. So if you have it on the front, people, it gives people opportunity to know kind of what to expect for your show without having to click into it. And people are not gonna do that. So put in your show because the title is only so long and you cannot fit everything in there. So definitely I would recommend putting the brands that you're having in the show. It will give people more enticement to bookmark it if they like the brands, even if you don't have like great brands, definitely still put it on there so people know because some people are looking for those great deals for not expensive stuff. People not, everyone is looking for expensive items and high starting bids and stuff like that. Some people just want really cheap, you know, great items, mall brands, you know, American Eagle, even Old Navy, Target, cute stuff. So put that in there. And if you have certain styles, if maybe you are, you know, selling more style based of those brands, like maybe put like a little bit of brands and then kind of like some styles or even put like maybe Pinterest inspo pictures of like, these are the type of styles I'm selling in my show. Um, just give people a little something that you're putting in your show so that they're more likely to go ahead and book it. Also, I think Jen's show is starting soon. So I'm gonna come back. I'm going to finish these tips in a second. I'm going, oh, she just started right now. I'm joining her show. Um, so make sure you follow LA Posture Jen. Uh, what now, she's got really great shows. I'm gonna go join that right now and I will be right back as I charge my phone. Okay, I'm back from Jen's show. It was so much fun. She was celebrating a 1K follower celebration on there. So she had tons of prizes, which kind of gets into another tip. I almost, I honestly forgot what I was even talking about before. Um, I think with the um, putting the brands into your little photo. So going into the talk about a little bit about prizes, I think prizes definitely help get some hype around your show. So I would recommend putting in a couple into at least your first show. It's a good way to build hype. I know they can be a little bit hard to keep up with, so it's maybe okay to trickle out, but definitely be getting it. Can really help build your show even if you're promoting on Instagram and maybe don't even have as big of a following. You can still promote it and hype the people up that do follow you and share it on your little stories on whatnot um, so that people who do start following you can see those stories. Um, that kind of goes into the stories on whatnot. I personally don't use them as much as I would like to. I kind of transfer over the same stories that I use on Instagram onto there, but I kind of want to start putting more stories on there, especially stories of just me showing up because I feel like a lot of people just put pictures about promoting their show, but I think there still comes a point where being authentic and people getting to know you and showing up in your stories on whatnot in that way is a good way to kind of grow your audience and grow community and for people to see you as a person and not just like you selling items if that makes sense another tip i talked about me having my starting bids to not lose money i would recommend you do the same especially starting off if you don't have as big of a following and you don't have as many people in your shows it's more than likely that things may sell at what your starting price is. So that's where just making sure you're starting at a price where you're not losing money is so important. And if you, even if you're paying more for items and you're finding that things aren't selling at the starting bid, that's when it can be good to really evaluate the items you're picking up and maybe try to find more lower cost of good items just to get that running and be able to sell more things instead of just going throughout a whole show and while you're growing your following, not selling anything. And in terms of the type of show you're having, I have seen a lot of people do requests when they don't have as many people in their show, just to make sure that the people who are there are able to kind of see the things that they want. However, I think that is one way to go about it. I just personally think that's not something I would do even if I didn't have a following, just because it's good to create some consistency. And when I go to those shows that are, um, more request based. Another thing is like, I don't know how long they're going to run. 
Um, a lot of times there may not be people, enough people even in there to even, people don't even know what they want to request. That's when it's good just to keep it efficient, keep it running, because there is some more lag when there are requests coming in when you don't have as many people. And that just gives people an opportunity to like come out because nothing's really happening. You really want to keep shows really moving you want to keep them engaging so that's why even myself like me reflecting back i think i can even go quicker in my shows where i might be talking too much about an item instead of just starting it right away so i think that is so huge just really getting moving through items quickly i think as long as you're starting at a price that you want to and you're getting through quickly if things don't sell it's okay you can move on you're not losing money and at the same time you're growing and keeping consistent with with people who are following you and coming into your shows where you may not sell a lot in the beginning because you're running faster, but you're really developing that following, which will help you down the line. So there might be some sacrifices you have to make. Maybe you're not selling as much as you would like to, but again, you won't be losing money if you start at a price you're comfortable with. That will definitely help you down the line. I think it's so important to remember with one not, especially if you don't have as much of a following, that you just have to be consistent with it and then you will see the results that you want, but you shouldn't kind of manipulate your shows to match what you need to make sale-wise. I think you should start off at a place where you want it to be even down the road. Because when it comes to requests, it's like people do request a lot of times. There's definitely caveats for things. Like I mentioned before, and a lot of people don't do requests because they have so many people come and it gets too crazy. And so if you ever want to get to that point, it probably is just going to be like too much to keep up with. So I, I kind of would recommend going in order and just keeping shows efficient and keeping in good items. And that's really going to sell itself in order to continue to grow followers, especially if you're engaging with people in the community as well. So that would be another huge, huge tip. What else? I'm trying to think, I feel like I have so many things to say. I'm already, I didn't even realize my last video was like 30 minutes before I popped down here. So putting your items or styles in the top of the show picture, not running at times that other people are running at, being super engaging with the chat and having prizes to hype up, doing what you can to promote on Instagram, keeping the show efficient and going in order. And then also in terms of lighting, I feel like that is huge. People just like going to shows, they of course wanna see the items that you're selling. So if you're not having good lighting with something, definitely make sure you have a good setup. I have, I use a ring light and then I have it like set up where it's like a little bit higher just so I can show like all the items as well. I would definitely recommend a ring light, especially if you were thinking about more nighttime shows um, because I know I do them in my office and it can, start getting dark when I do them. My lights are more like a weird fluorescent light. So the ring light just helps brighten it up a little bit. So if you don't have a ring light and you do want to invest in whatnot, I would recommend getting them. I think the good one I have is like $70 and I think it definitely is worth the investment. And so then with lighting, I feel like that covers a lot of everything, of course, just learning what works for you. At the end of the day, you have to do like what makes you happy, what makes it enjoyable for you because it is still you putting time into something and you don't want it to just be something that, you know, you're like, this is not worth it. Um, I could definitely see if I was starting and I wasn't making the sales I want to, and I was like, this is just not going over well, that'd be really easy to start to quit. But I will say like things sell for themselves. So I would definitely just make sure that you are still putting somewhat quality items into your shows. So just put like basics. As long as you're focusing on style and really have it something that people want to buy, I think if as long as you're starting off low, then you can make sales. And coming from a place where I sell more like higher end stuff and I get all the time people saying like, oh, I don't have that higher end stuff. I know every single one of you have not that good brand, but decent style stuff at your thrift stores. And if you can come across that under $10, that is definitely a way better place to start than trying to even get into like the higher end stuff with whatnot. So not everyone has a bins by you. So if you don't have a bins, don't worry. But if you, as long as you have thrift stores, you can dig through those thrift stores, find good style items, even if they're starting off being like, Target or Loft or any of those kind of brands that you would probably maybe not even think about selling on Poshmark. I would even start there, recommend doing there because it's so style based. And if you pick something up for, let's say $7 for a Target dress, but it's like a maxi dress that's super cute and a good size, 
you could probably sell it for you know 15 20 dollars on there let's say at least and although it's not a huge profit it's starting off where people can trust that you're pulling through with items that they may want later down the road versus just coming and picking up something that's just like a basic top or something like that because when you're showing up and coming to your shows you have these items people understand it's like okay this might not be my size this may not be the exact style i want but i can trust that this caliber of items is the stuff i'm looking for and that's kind of what you want to show with your audience so even if you're coming through and you know it's not maybe all the sizes you're really looking for it's not the brands you're really looking for but it is the styles and that is way better of a place to start so that is another huge thing and i think i went through all my tips you just don't feel like you need a full on instagram following to get started I definitely have heard a lot of people, like I mentioned, who have just solely grown on there. I know people who have large Instagram followings and they are somewhat promoting on their Instagram, but not fully, but there is so much that's able to be done on whatnot. And that's, like I said, tip number one, really showing up in the community, in the chats, engaging with the chat and helping out sellers where you can with it. And that literally goes such a long way. So those are all my tips on it. I'll probably do a little bit more videos um, in the future with whatnot as I continue to see what works for me. As I mentioned, I want to do shows that have more chats. So definitely make sure if you're not following me on um, whatnot, I'm Recloth Collection on there. I'll go ahead and put a link to my, what's it called? Little page storefront there. So you can go ahead and give me a follow. Definitely stay tuned for any like chats I have about whatnot. And I would love to follow you along on there. So definitely drop your um, store names and um, whatnot. And I'll make sure that I'm following you, especially if you have shows and stuff. But if not, drop it down below. Um, go through the comments, like follow everyone else. Really start developing that community there. It is still pretty small where um, just being on, being within the community, like you, it's still so small knit. Like you're not this small fish in a big pond. Like it's a pretty small pond where everyone really kind of knows each other there. So. Put your information down below, I'll follow you. Um, I'll put my information, you can follow me and that'll be so much fun. So thank you so much for staying tuned for this. Um, I don't know when editing this how like this is gonna be, but this might be like my longest video talking. And I don't know where my dog's at, but she's still, she didn't make her sh uh, debut for her second appearance for the second half of the show here. But thank you so much for watching. Definitely leave your comments on what you think also down below. And sorry if I was rambling or repeating myself. Just so it was a lot of fun. Oh, and also lastly, what I wanted to say is if you're looking for more tips about whatnot, then uh, my friend Regina at Basic Posh Babe, whose uh, podcast now is uh, the Posh Babe podcast, has a great episode recently all about whatnot tips. I know she's my friend, and so of course I'm going to promote it, but I literally listen to it every single week because I love it, even if she was my friend or not. So make sure you go along and subscribe to her podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, whatever, because she puts out great information and she is been selling on whatnot a lot. So I'm sure she's going to have more information on that. Potentially, I'm not going to like put it out there, but she's a great resource because she has been doing really well on there. Um, so definitely go check out that podcast if you're looking for even more tips on how to whatnot essentially so thank you guys so much for watching give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and be sure to subscribe to my channel because i'll be putting out videos as much as i can every single wednesday so hope to see you guys okay i'm popping back on here after putting in dinner because i came up with some more tips or just more clarifying tips for you if you are selling items and you are too afraid you don't want to be like paying up for items of like higher brands to sell but you are like shopping at a thrift store for more like style based items definitely excuse me definitely go and try to focus on more like those higher asp categories that i always talk about like dresses sweaters for winter uh jackets for winter um, and the, like high quality blouses, like focusing on those things will help those items sell for more versus a like, I know like t-shirts do really well on there. So kind of figuring out the items that do well, one that like band tees, okay. Those are like a caveat for like t-shirts, but like if you're just looking at like basic tank tops or t-shirts, like those aren't usually always gonna sell for as much as like a sweater or a jacket. So focusing on those higher ASP items style base wise will help you reach a higher sales goal and hopefully make a bigger profit on those type of items. So 
just want to add that tip in there since that is like a huge tip in terms of what to sell but definitely going to shows is a huge way just to learn that's how i've been learning a lot of and also seeing what sells and how much you're selling for of course never think that because someone sold for something for x amount you'll sell it for x amount because even that same seller who sold it for x amount before will sell it for a different amount later so things can always change so just like bank on something selling for the same amount however you do start to get to notice trends and patterns and what people are liking from that so go to shows take note of that i've noticed a lot of like um like good american abercrombie like stylized h&m what else um those are some things that like not then other than like normal stuff i would sell those tend to just oh my dinner is like my dog's dinner is done it tends to do really well okay that's all i'll say bye